In this video, we'll be looking at the LazyVim setup for NeoVim, powered by Lazy.nvim, which is a modern plugin manager. LazyVim is a great way to get started with an ID-like environment, and it also has great ways to extend and modify how it's configured. LazyVim also has its own documentation site, which is a nice addition to its GitHub repo. So let's begin. We'll go to the installation section of the site, and first, we'll back up our current NeoVim setup in case we want to revert back later. And then we'll clone the LazyVim starter repo to our local machine. And then we'll remove the .git folder so you can add it to your own repo later. Okay, so now you should be able to start NeoVim and watch the magic happen. The lazy.mvim experience is very nice and interactive, especially in this case where you're setting up an environment for the first time. And by the end, you have your new lazyvim version of NeoVim all set up. It's a good idea at this point to run the check health command to verify that everything is okay. So I'm a bit zoomed in for this recording, but if I zoom out a little, you'll see something more like what you would see. A dashboard for quick actions you might want when you first open NeoVim. Okay, let's quit and switch to the folder where our new LazyVim configuration lives. And relaunch NeoVim. A good thing to know about LazyVim is that it comes pre-installed with the Witch key. This plugin allows you to hit the leader key, space by default, and it'll show a list of key maps for you to explore. This is handy especially when the key maps might be new to you, or you infrequently use some of them. So, in our case, let's type E which will open NeoTree at our root directory. And let's navigate to the Lua config folder and open up the lazy.lua file. Then we'll toggle NeoTree off with leader E again. Since we typed the key map quickly, the which key overlap doesn't appear, which is a nice touch. You'll notice that several plugins and language servers aren't installed until they're needed, which is great for initial performance. Let's open up Mason which is a way to manage language servers, linters, formatters, and more with leader CM. So the installed language servers does not include TypeScript, which is something that I regularly use. I could install it using Mason, but there are other settings I would need to manually set up. Thankfully, however, LazyVim has a few modules already coded that include the TypeScript settings already wired up for us. So let's uncomment lines 14 through 16 to include TypeScript and JSON support along with the mini animate plugin, which I'll show you what that does later. And we'll save our changes and quit NeoVim. Now let's switch back to our previous TypeScript project with CD Dash, and then start NeoVim. On launch, you'll see that lazy.nvim is installing some plugins that were required by the lines we uncommented earlier. All right, now let's start to navigate our TypeScript project. We'll type space, our leader key, to engage which key, then F to find, and then F again to find files. This launches the telescope plugin that will search for files known by Git. Normally you'd see a preview of these files, so let me zoom out just a tad. And as I search, you can see a preview of the selected file on the right. Let's open the page.tsx file. LazyVim comes pre-configured with the leap.nvim plugin to allow you to easily jump to any location which is what I'm using here to jump directly to the first styles reference. You might have noticed the cursor animating to the location. Well, that was the mini.animate plugin that we enabled earlier. Since we installed the TypeScript language server, we can now leverage LSP features such as rename. Here we'll rename styles to CSS, and the LSP will intelligently rename the variables as needed. If you press a capital K, it'll show hover documentation showing type information. Let's search for a string across our project. We'll hit leader and then S for search and G for grep from our root directory. And we'll search for John. As before, I'm a bit zoomed in here, so let's zoom out for a more realistic view. Here on the right, you can see a preview of the search results for the match. And let's go to that file. Here we can see some inline linting information coming from the TypeScript LSP. Here we could use the trouble plugin by pressing leader XX to view diagnostics. Then you could jump directly to the issue, and we'll close that panel. And then we can launch some code actions via the TypeScript LSP by pressing leader CA. In this case, we'll just prefix the RAQ variable with an underscore to ignore the warning. 
If you'd like to change your color scheme, then you could press Leader U capital C. And we'll switch to Elf Lord. Then we'll change it back to Tokyo Night. Once you have more than one buffer open, you could toggle between them by pressing Leader FB. And Telescope will open with existing buffers and we'll pick Page TSX. You could also use the right bracket B to go to the next buffer and the left bracket B to go to the previous buffer. And you could always use the mouse to click the tabs at the top of the window. There are other ways too, but those are the ones I primarily use. Okay, now let's switch to splits. You could create a vertical split by pressing leader pipe and create a horizontal split by pressing leader dash. And then you can navigate to the left split with control H, to the right split with control L, down a split with control J, and up a split with control K. And you can adjust the size of the split with control up, control down, control right, and control left. Okay, let's close those splits and move along to help. You can bring up a huge list of help pages to search by pressing leader SH. Let's search for to-do and see its help page. This help page is about a to-do plugin that LazyVim has installed. Let's exit this help page and take a look. Above our home function, let's add a to-do comment saying, do this or that. Already, you can see visually that the to-do comment looks special. Let's switch to the next buffer before pressing leader ST to search for to-dos. And you'll see the to-do from the other file. If we press enter, it'll switch us back over to that buffer to the correct line. Another piece of functionality that you would probably expect from an IDE is auto-completion. Well, LazyVin wires that all up for you as well. If we start typing func, you'll see a list of auto-completions, and one of them is a snippet. So we'll control in down to that option and hit enter. Then we could fill in the stops along the way. We'll call this say hello, then tab and change params to message, then tab and make the type a string, and then tab into the body of the function. Now we could type the code of our function. We'll just console.log and print out hello and the message passed to the function with autocompletes showing up along the way. Then when we use our new function, say hello, we also get autocomplete help and type information to help us again. And here we'll say world. Sometimes you know there's a key map that you want and which key may just not be cutting it. In that case, you could press leader SK to search key maps. Here we'll type lazy and you can see that there's a key map for leader L to launch lazy. In this case, I could just hit enter since I have it selected, which will bring up the lazy.mbim UI. Here, you might want to sync up your plugins with a capital S, which installs, cleans, and updates all of your plugins. In this case, we have a few updates, LazyVim itself and the indent blank line plugin. You could also press capital P to look at the profile of our plugins. It looks like our total startup time is about 50 milliseconds. You could filter down the list with control F and only show plugins that are slower than some threshold. We'll enter 10 milliseconds, and here are those plugins. Okay, let's exit and move along. There are several settings that you could toggle on and off. For example, pressing leader UL toggles the UI line numbers off and on. There are several other UI toggles that you could explore yourself. Let's go over to the CSS module and do some global search replace. Here we're going to leverage the Spectre plugin by pressing leader SR to search and replace. Here we'll replace description with the term summary, which has 17 matches. And we'll limit the path to files that end with TSX or CSS, which reduces our matches down to 11. We can view additional help in Spectre by typing the question mark. And let's move this over a little to give some room and we'll type leader RC to replace the current item. However, I don't want to change the meta tag, so I'll press DD on this line to delete the current item, which means I can replace the rest of the items with leader capital R. Now let's see where we're at and use lazy git by pressing leader GG. This view is a bit cramped since I'm zoomed in so far for this video, so I'll zoom out slightly and I'll zoom back. From LazyGit, you could review your work, stage files, commit your work, and so much more. I'm a big fan of LazyGit, so it's a nice feature to be able to launch it directly from NeoVim. 
Another handy key map is to be able to quickly spin up a temporary terminal by pressing leader FT from your root directory. Here I'll just run npm run, which will show a list of available npm scripts that I can run. And I'll just exit when I'm done. All right, let's quit our TypeScript project for now and transition to extending LazyVim from our initial setup. But before we do, how about subscribing to this channel and liking the video? The stats show that most who watch my videos are not subscribers, but you can change that. Oh, and it'd be nice if you could comment about something you'd like me to cover in future videos. Okay, enough with that. Let's switch back to the NeoVim config directory with CD Dash and we'll start adding, editing, and disabling stuff from the base LazyVim config. And let's launch NeoVim and get into it. We'll open up NeoTree and navigate to the Lua config folder and open the options.lua file. This is where you could add your own custom options for NeoVim. You can always reference to the documentation on what options LazyVim already provides. In our case, let's set the win bar for NeoVim, which is content that is displayed at the top of every window where equals represents a separation point for alignment, m is a modifier flag of the buffer, and f is the path to the file in the buffer. So let's save our file and source it. And now you can see the win bar in the upper right of the buffer. This might not be super helpful right now, but if you have multiple splits, it could come in more handy. Speaking of splits, let's make a vertical split and open the keymaps.lua file. Here we'll add a new keymap for normal mode and we'll use the leader.sx keymap that will resume the last telescope picker that happened to be open previously. And we'll make this not recursive and silent. Okay, we'll save this, which will be auto-formatted. Now let's source this file and test it. If we press leader to kick in which key, we can see S to search, but then for the X, there's an empty spot. So we registered the keymap it works just fine, but I didn't provide a description. So let's go back and do that. We'll go to the last argument and add a new DESC description entry to the Lua table. And we'll call it resume. Okay, so we'll save again, which formats the file. Then we'll source the file again. And if we type leader S, we'll now see our new X with a resume next to it. And sure enough, it still brings up the last telescope picker. There's also an autocommands.lua file where you can register any specific autocommands that you want, but we'll move on to another topic. Instead, let's open up the example.lua file from the plugins folder. This file has a lot of handy examples that you could pull from. None of them are executed because it returns an empty Lua table at the beginning of the file. So now I'd like to show you how to modify the default color scheme of LazyVim. Let's come down to line 11 and we'll grab until line 21. We'll yank those lines to use in just a little bit. Over in NeoTree, you could press the question mark to get a helpful list of commands. On the plugins folder, we'll press A to add a new file called groovebox.lua. In this file, we'll return a Lua table and paste the lines that we just yanked. The Lua table on line two registers the groovebox theme, and the other Lua table updates the definition of LazyVim and adjusts the color scheme option to Groovebox instead of the default Tokyo Night. Once we save this file, LazyVim is already aware that it's special. If we open up Lazy, you'll see that it's aware and that we want Groovebox, but it hasn't been installed yet. And we can press capital I to install the new theme. Now let's quit and restart NeoVim to see the difference. And sure enough, this is the Groovebox theme. Okay, let's try something else. We'll add a new piece of functionality to Telescope. We'll add a file browser picker. So let's add a file-browser.lua file to the plugins folder. And here we'll paste in a snippet that defines the plugin, which is an extension for Telescope. Then we can actually define plugin-specific key maps in the same file under the keys entry. Here we're saying leader S capital B will invoke Telescope using the file browser extension and using the path of the current buffer. And we'll provide a description so that which key works well too. Then we'll register the extension after the plugin loads. So let's save the file. Then we'll open Lazy, and we can see that the plugin isn't installed yet, and you can also see that it recognizes our custom key map, leader S capital B. We'll go ahead and install it with capital I, 
and quit any of them, and restart. And here I'll press leader, then S, then capital B, and voila, there's our telescope file browser, where we can navigate down into folders and back up. Okay, next let's change this dashboard lazy vim with something a little more custom. For this, we'll create a new file in the plugins folder called alpha.lua. And here I'll paste in a bit of code. So in line two, we're referencing the existing plugin that LazyVim is already using. The ops function allows us to take the existing options that were defined elsewhere and to tweak them for our purposes. So I'm taking the section header value from the options and setting it to a banner that says NeoVim with my Twitter handle underneath. So we'll save this file, quit NeoVim and relaunch, and hey, a customized dashboard. Okay, so we showed how to get started, how to add your own settings, and how to modify existing settings. Before we conclude, let's show how to disable some features that you may not want from the base LazyVim configuration. For this, we'll add yet another file to the plugins folder called disabled.lua. In this file, let's return a Lua table with an entry that disables the Spectre plugin. Maybe you don't like this plugin, and you'd rather use Telescope, Quick Fix Lists, and CDO updates instead. So let's save this file, quit NeoVim, and relaunch. Now when we launch WitchKey and go into S for search, you will no longer see the R key registered for the Spectre plugin because it was disabled. I know I showed a lot during this video and it was a bit of a whirlwind, but I hope that you learned something interesting. Believe it or not, there's a whole lot more LazyVim provides that I didn't even show. I highly recommend that you check out the documentation there's some great stuff in there. And until next time, keep learning. And please leave a comment about what you think about LazyVim. I'd love to hear about it.